In the world of finance, there's more twisting than in a pretzel factory. And this time, it's inflation doing the dance. Recently, a report unveiled an unexpected twist in the plot. Consumer prices have been boogieing to a beat faster than we predicted, with the consumer price index rising 3.4% over the prior year. But here's where the dance gets interesting. When you exclude the volatile food and energy categories, core inflation actually dipped to an annual rate of 3.9%. So what does this mean for the Federal Reserve's next move on rates? Well, it's a tad bit complicated. Some Fed officials want to see inflation slow its tempo before considering a rate cut. But Wall Street is placing its bets on a rate cut in March with a 61% chance. It's a bit like trying to predict a weather forecast, only instead of deciding whether to carry an umbrella, we're talking about the future of our economy. So folks, better hold on to your hats or your wallets because this financial weather is a bit breezy. Speaking of wallet woes, it seems like more people are playing hide and seek with their credit card payments. It's a game where the stakes are high and the penalties are even higher. A recent report by the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia tells us that credit card delinquency rates have increased during the third quarter of last year, surpassing even pre-pandemic levels. It's like some of us have decided to treat our credit card bills like that embarrassing high school yearbook photo, best forgotten and hidden away. But here's the kicker. Like that photo, these bills have a way of resurfacing at the most inconvenient times. The rising delinquencies coincide with a period of high inflation and increasing interest rates, making debt more expensive for borrowers. So remember, if your credit card bill is out of sight, out of mind, it might just come back to haunt you. Shifting gears to the court, where the NBA tries to debunk the myth of load management. In a recent report, the league claims that load management doesn't decrease injury risk. It's a bit like a parent trying to convince their child that eating their vegetables won't make them a superhero. The NBA has even implemented fines for teams that bench players for nationally televised games and introduced a new rule requiring players to reach a 65-game threshold for regular season awards. It's a bold strategy akin to telling your kid they won't get dessert unless they finish their broccoli. But will it change current practices? Some teams and players might have already done their homework and reached different conclusions. And let's not forget there could be objections to how load management is defined. So will NBA teams eat their greens or will we see more players benched? Stay tuned. From the court to the pitch where the football transfer market is hotter than a jalapeno, Let's dive into the swirling vortex of rumors and speculation that is the transfer market. It's like a high-stakes game of musical chairs, except the music is money and the chairs are multi-million pound contracts. First off, Arsenal is reportedly eyeing striker Borja Mayoral from Getafe. Will they seal the deal or will it be another case of the one that got away? Meanwhile, Tottenham seems to have an insatiable appetite for talent, hungrily pursuing Conor Gallagher from Chelsea and Victor O'Simon. Over in Spain, Real Madrid is playing a tantalizing game of will they, won't they, with Erling Haaland. If their move for Kylian Mbappé falls through, we could see Haaland donning the white jersey. And speaking of jerseys, Jadon Sancho might be swapping his Manchester United red for Borussia Dortmund yellow, while Hannibal Magebury might be shipping off to Sevilla. As for Newcastle, their bid for Dominic Solanke was swatted away by Bournemouth like an annoying fly. But don't worry, Newcastle, there's plenty more fish in the sea or players in the field to be precise. Finally, Jack Clark seems to be the bell of the ball, with West Ham, Brentford, and Crystal Palace all vying for his signature. So who will end up where? Only time will tell, and until then, the rumor mill keeps churning. And finally, from the pitch to the Petri dish, where one brain cell might just hold the secret to a longer life. A recent study on mice has found that by activating neurons in the hypothalamus, our furry friends lived an extra 60 to 70 days longer than their control group counterparts. That's like adding about eight human years to your life. The secret? These neurons communicate with fat tissues, triggering a fight or flight response that promotes the use of white adipose stores. The researchers believe this mechanism, which is all about fueling the body, is conserved across various vertebrate species. Could this work for us humans? Well, further research is needed to understand the details of this mechanism and its potential impact on other tissue types in the body. But who knows, if this pans out, the fountain of youth might not be a mythical spring, but a neuron nestled in our own heads. So folks, next time you're searching for the secret to long life, remember, it might be all in your head.